story that's already making international headlines. The Auckland City Mission unknowingly distributed meth-laced confectionery. A child thankfully spat out the lolly the family had received in a food parcel from the mission. The Rinda branded pineapple lollies manufactured in Malaysia and were donated sometime in the middle of July. So far, the mission knows of eight families that have been affected but not harmed. Three people have been observed in hospital, but they have since been discharged. The mission's commissioner, Helen Robinson, said she is absolutely devastated and says uh, it only accepts commercially manufactured food for inclusion for food parcels. The lollies uh, appeared as such when donated. They were in a sealed retail size package. Police say they were prioritising the investigation given the risk to the public. Two mission staff also tried these lollies. They spat them out, thankfully, because of the taste. They took the lollies to the New Zealand Drug Foundation for testing and the executive, executive director of the Drug Foundation is Sarah Helm and she joins me on the show again. Hello, Sarah. Yeah, oh, kia ora, Leah. Kia ora, well, you. this is one for the books, isn't it? My goodness. Um, when was the Drug Foundation notified and what did the initial testing show? Yeah, just before three. Um, so the staff, uh, what I understand is in between the phone call, the staff trying it and then getting to us was a very short space of time. Uh, so fortunately we have a very close relationship with the City Mission and a bunch of community organisations, of course. Um, so they raced and we tested it and it showed to be 100% methamphetamine, uh, which we were immediately very concerned about. And within the hour, we'd made calls to various people to start the uh, process around, you know, poisons lined and the National Drug Intelligence Bureau uh, being informed. And this was this was yesterday afternoon, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, it's been yep. pretty non-stop since. So I bet. yeah. Um, mm. I believe the lolly was sealed in a sealed bag of about two hundred of them. How many did the Drug Foundation test from that bag? Um, so, do you, will the others be tested, or have they been sent away for testing? Um, I, I did uh, watch the police stand up earlier today. They have been uh, been able to collect a few more. Uh, we 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 expect that they will be sent off for forensic testing, usually at ESR. Um, we have had our sample uh, tested since at ESR and confirmed that our test results were accurate in terms of it being methamphetamine. Um, so, yeah, really important that we do uh, check those facts because it's a matter of the size of the issue and the size of sort of trying to work out the parameter of the risk to people. Yeah. yeah. What? How many doses could you have got out of that one lolly you tested? Yeah, so we weighed the lolly. Uh, so because it was 100% methamphetamine, I mean, we can only, we only test tiny samples, so we tested a couple of tiny samples. Yeah. Um, but both of those tested back as being 100%. So probably um, that's three grams of methamphetamine in each of those lollies, which is the equivalent of 300-ish uh, uh, doses right. of methamphetamine, which is, you know, a lethal Yes. Uh, dosage. So you're really concerned. And when we first heard about it, we were terrified that people yep. may have already experienced fatality. We're still working through the process to determine whether or not that has happened. But so far, uh, touching wood here, uh, mm. so far, so good. Um, the other thing that we have done today, which we haven't told anyone before, so you're the uh, we're breaking this with you, um, but um, we've rung around the community organisations that work on the front line with vulnerable communities who might be distributing food and so forth, and we've got nothing more to report, which is basically good news. Um, oh, gosh, yeah. that is good. Oh, look, so you, you say community organisations, You these are obviously... Um, they, so they deliver food as well because all, all, there's a lot of places that do a, that, don't they? A range, a range yeah. actually. So off the back of the synthetic cannabinoids crisis back in 2017-ish, yeah. um, the government invested in supporting us to run an acute drug harm sort of, or we call it something fancy and washy, but community of practice, 
which is just a bunch of a network of frontline providers and ourselves sharing information around um, more potent substances and unusual effects. So um, we've really used that in the last 24 hours to uh, ascertain if there's more risk or be part of that risk assessment process anyway. Great, and they haven't and they haven't uh, seen any. So far, so good. So yes, yeah. so that's good news. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, and that one small lolly, you're saying there could be, you know, it, it amounted to about 300 doses, which would be lethal if if you were to swallow or have had the whole lolly. So even yeah. if you spat it out, would you would would you recommend you still seek medical help? Um, you possibly, I mean, depending on the age of the person, you might, if you just spat it out, experience a little bit of effect without any toxic ramifications. You're not... Just to be clear, going to get addicted from tasting methamphetamine once, or even no. uh, yeah, it's it's that's a bit of a myth from the old US-driven war on drugs. But mm. um, but um, uh, if there are if anyone does know anyone who may be experiencing effects, don't hesitate to ring one 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 if you're concerned. Uh, if you're not sure, the poisons line are fully informed and are ready to take calls. Um, yeah. It's believed, um, Sarah, that it was a drug smuggling operation that's gone wrong. Is it a common method to disguise meth and other drugs as, as another product to get it circulating around the country or into the country? Because these yeah, so bollies were made in Malaysia. So that's our, that's actually come from us, that suggestion. And um, it's because we've had a good think about it, we are aware that drug smuggling does uh, frequently use disguised product, particularly in food uh, f- food products, and it has been the case that it's been on lollies in other countries. So um, the fact that it was sealed, um, the fact that it looked like lollies um, suggests to us that it might have been somehow accidentally diverted out of a illicit supply and has mm. uh, potentially even very innocently been donated to the mission. I mean, we're casting, you know, a lot of guesses in, the, in there, but um, yeah. it would be very surprising because it's worth a lot of money. Uh, it's an unusual way to harm, try and intentionally harm people, so it doesn't make sense that it was donated knowingly. That's that's our assumption. Mm. But, yeah, it's really yeah. over to police to determine those facts. You said it was, you know, it was worth a lot of money, these drugs on the street. Do you know the cost of around about each, you know, sweet, each lolly? Yeah, so it's, uh, you, uh, the street value of methamphetamines uh, last we knew about $400 per gram. Uh, so you're looking at three grams, potentially 20 of those, uh, a fair whack of money. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sarah, you said, uh, in, our, in fact, the very starting of our interview was that, you you know, the mission came to you very quickly and started the ball rolling and you were able to test. So how, I mean, this highlights, doesn't it, how important having a legalised, funded drug testing system is? It really, really does. There's no way a few years ago anyone would have known. Um, 